How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. We had a lot of requests from a video that we did previously about adding an outlet in the RV. And so today, since then I'm gonna be adding another one, I thought I'd bring you along. So today's project is gonna be adding an outlet in the front storage area. I've needed an outlet in there a couple of times and rather than messing with extension cords and having to manage those, I would much rather spend a little bit of time putting in an outlet in that area so that I don't have to look for extension cords all the time and the power is right where I need it. So we've added power throughout the RV in a couple of places, and this one's going to be a little bit different. So today we're gonna to be using uh, this outlet here. We're gonna be pulling power from here to add it to the front. The reason why that's gonna work out well is because this is already GFI protected. And so by using this outlet and then putting one over here, adding off of this, this one in the front bay is also going to be GFI protected, which I would have wanted also. This one's also going to be different than the other ones that I've done before because it's going to be surface mount in there because I don't have anywhere to mount the outlet inside the wall. So let me talk about the differences of why we've installed it three different ways on these different outlets that we've installed in the RV. Each scenario can actually be a little bit different, but the core idea stays the same. Now, the first way that I added an outlet inside the RV is I added a breaker. Well, I didn't actually add a breaker, I swapped one out. So I uh, swapped one out for a tandem breaker because all of our slots in the breaker panel were already full. So uh, by taking that breaker panel off and being able to add this slot, I was able to add an outlet down underneath the table where we had room to add an outlet. Now, what I mean by room down here is we have wall space with a cavity behind it because that's where almost all the other electrical stuff inside the RV is. So it's not just the thickness of the wall. We actually have space behind there to be able to mount an additional box for this outlet. This was by far the easiest option for this location because it was right next to the breaker panel where we wanted to add the outlet. So something I wanted to keep in mind while I did this is I didn't want to mess with the breaker panel too much. I didn't want to start moving things around. I don't want to end up with two ACs on one hot leg in this panel. So I'm not going to move a bunch of things around, but I did find a breaker slot where I was able to swap these out and I'm just able to add a 15 amp breaker in that location. So when I made these connections, it's gonna be the same on the outlet compared to what we're doing today, but we needed to connect directly to the breaker. So the existing circuit that was there gets connected into this breaker, and then on that open slot on the breaker, we we're gonna connect our black wire that's gonna be feeding our outlet. In our neutral, the white wire will go to the neutral bus bar, and the ground will go to the ground bus bar. It's important to remember when I was doing this, I had all power turned off to the RV. So our inverter was off, we were disconnected from shore power, and the breaker was off. So there was no, no power going to it, so while I was working on it, it was safe. Now the other outlet that we added the other day that we talked about in the previous video, uh, it was easy because it was at the end of the line of our GFI outlets that were in the kitchen. Meaning that that box that we tied into just had one Romex going into it. Now just a side note on these outlets that are existing in the RV, uh, they're really simple. They have their own enclosure uh, and they're much smaller profile. That's because they need to fit inside these thinner walls. But I'm not a huge fan of these outlets. I would rather if I have room to be able to remove that, put in a normal cut-in box and a normal outlet. So that's what we did on this one. We had plenty of room in that cavity. So we ran a new wire through that cavity just down the cabinet area to our new location. So I cut that out for a new cut-in box, brought that wire in and made that outlet up. So that one was pretty simple, but let's go through the steps of installing the one that we have today and I'll show you each of those connections for installing it on the RV. So let's start by removing that cover and being able to expose that box. Once you have that cover off, you don't wanna remove these screws all the way because those are actually holding it tight against this wall. And so if you remove those all the way, you're gonna lose a portion, that plastic portion that's holding it against this wall, it's gonna fall back in there. So you just wanna loosen those up so they can rotate it so you can pull it back through. Now that we have this one out, we just wanna prepare the opening so that it can take a normal cut-in box. Because we have room behind here, we can put in a normal cut-in box and a normal outlet, which I would much prefer. So uh, we're gonna cut it to enlarge it, and then we want to run our wires now that we have this opened up a little bit more, we can run our wires to where we're going to be going. 
To be honest, usually this is the tricky part because it's not always easy to fish wires through the wall. Uh, we're pretty fortunate on this because this panel is removable. But we just want to run it up around and we're going to secure it right above this door and drop it into that storage bay. Now, another tip while you're running this wire is you don't want it to be run up against anything sharp. So you wanna make sure that nothing is gonna penetrate this Romex wire and cause a short somewhere, especially metal. So if you have to drill through metal, uh, like a metal sheeting of some kind, uh, you want to put a rubber grommet in there so that it would be protected. As you're going down the road, it's not gonna be basically working its way through the Romex wire. Since I'm using Romex here also, you're not supposed to put that in conduit. But if you wanted to put it in this sheathing, you can. This is different than conduit. But if you're trying to clean up your install and make it look like everything else in the RV, you can use a product like this. But you do want to have your wire supported. So that's where these zip ties come in real handy. They have a way where you can put a screw through them so you can zip tie around the wire and then you can secure it to the surface that you're running it along. So having your wire properly supported is going to keep it from dangling down, getting pulled on, yanked, pulled out of the box, causing a problem there. So Keep it supported and make sure that it's not going to be penetrated by something sharp. Now that we have our wires run into here, we can mount our box and start to make up that outlet. So when we're connecting the outlet, I prefer to use the screw terminals on the side of the outlet so we can connect in our ground. We want to loop that around the screw in a clockwise motion. So that way when we're tightening it down, it just pulls more wire in. It doesn't undo it. So we're going to do that on each of the connections. So we can connect in our hot and our neutral side. Now we can put the cover on and that wraps up this side of it and we'll test it once we turn power back on, but we have to get that other one wrapped up. So this one was a little bit easier to wire because it's at the end of the line. We only have one wire coming in. The one that we have to go make up now, we would max out the amount of wires going into that box. So I'm going to put in a little junction box for the wires that were originally going in there and tie those back into this box where it's gonna have the outlet. Let me show you. So each plastic box actually has a little bit of information on the inside that's printed. So you can look in there and see what the cubic inch, the capacity of what this box is. It even gives you some numbers for how many wires are allowed, depending on the gauge, for each box. If we put in three Romex wires into here with the outlet, it actually overloads the box. So we have a couple of ways that we can fix that. Number one, this is a very small cut-in box. It's the only one that they had at the store when I was going to pick it up, but they do make a larger cut-in box. So if we would have had a deeper cut-in box, it has a larger capacity, has a higher rating for what can fit in that box. And so that would absolutely work in this situation to have those three wires come into it to make up our outlet. A quick example for numbers that we see in the box, uh, each wire for a number 14 that's gonna be coming in here actually counts as a two as far as volume. So this is a 14 cubic inch box. And since the amount of wires that we have and the outlet that puts us at a box that needs to have 18 cubic inches because each wire is two cubic inches, the grounds tied together counts as one and the outlet counts as another, that puts us at 18. This 14 will not do, but the 20 cubic inch larger box would work. That was all fun and possibly slightly confusing, but I didn't have the larger box as an option. So what I am going to do is I'm going to make my connections in a junction box. So I'm gonna make those connections in this and then feed this box. Save space in here and allows me to make those connections in the junction box. So our setup is gonna look a little bit different now. To start off with, we removed the original outlet in the RV and the two wires that fed this receptacle. We want those two wires to now go to our junction box that would be placed at the side. And we will have one additional new Romex of the 14-2 that now goes to the same location where we're putting in our cut-in box and your typical outlet receptacle. So that means inside of our junction box, all three of those black wires get tied together, all three of those white wires get tied together, and all three of those ground wires get tied together, put a wire nut on them and tape them off so that we don't have anything working itself loose as we go down the road. So now we can put the cover plate on the junction box and tuck it back in there and secure it to the RV. 
We also want to secure the wire that's coming out of the junction box within the first eight inches to secure it. So the end result of that is we have one wire feeding from the junction box to our cut-in box. And now we have our wire run to the new location where we're putting in that outlet. So now we can make up this cut-in box. First off, we wanna make a pigtail for the ground, meaning we're gonna tie the two wires that come into this together with a third so that we can connect that to the outlet. We simply twist these wires together, add a wire nut to it, and then we can twist this ground wire around the terminal on the outlet and tighten it down. Now our two black wires will go on the hot side of the outlet, again twist those around the terminals and tighten those down. And then on the other side will be the neutral side of the outlet for our white wires, twist those clockwise around those terminals and tighten each one of those down. Mount the outlet into the box and then we can put our cover and now we can begin testing. So once this outlet is tested, we can test the one in the front bay. When both are working and tested out properly, we know that we wired everything correctly. Little side note on me using wire nuts today. Uh, sometimes I would use a, a crimp style connector in this situation because uh, of it being an RV, you don't want that connection to come loose. You don't want these wire nuts to, to twist themselves loose. Now, when I'm gonna be twisting these wires together to prepare them for the wire nut, um, I'm very, very generous on how much I twist those wires together. I want there to be a strong connection, not just two wires sticking into a wire nut hoping that this holds it together. No, I want those wires twisted together in a very strong way. And then I twist on my wire nut as far as it'll go. And then I wanna add electric tape so that that way uh, it ties it to the wire, ties it to the wire nut, it can't back itself out. So it's a very strong connection when you do it that way. I've had great success using the crimp connectors and then I've also had good success uh, using these wire nuts with the electric tape and twisting them together. So another successful adding an outlet. This one was a little bit more complicated just because we had so many wires that were going to be in that box. But now we have one more outlet where we don't have to worry about trying to run an extension cord and we have power in that bay. So as always, I'll put links down in the description to the different materials and things that we use to be able to install these outlets on the RV. As far as the breakers, you wanna match the exact same breaker style that you already have in your panel because the back of these aren't always the same so that they might have a different connection and you don't want to be mixing those. But everything that we talked about today, I'll put a link down in the description. So I think that's gonna do it for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video.